For all of you who are familiar with my cooking style, you know at this point I am not a huge stickler for authenticity in the kitchen. Honestly, growing up in the US, all of the best food has immigrated from overseas and somehow morphed into an Americanized version of itself, which brings me to my guest today. Jim from the Sip and Feast YouTube channel actually lives right here in Long Island and his food is the best example of what happens when you mix Italian food culture with New York food culture. And a little spoiler alert, we are gonna be making three incredibly tasty pastas today and in the process I am guessing we will offend or somehow piss off some Italians out there. Alright, Jim in the house. Jim in the house. Long Island represent. Yes, by the yes. Way. How long have you been doing YouTube? Uh, I've been doing YouTube for exactly three years. Where I started, I got no traction at all until roughly one year ago. So one year ago, I only had 19,000 subs. By the time this is published, I'll have 500,000 subs. So my past life was I traded stock market, Wall Street, 14 years from roughly 1999 to 2013, 2014 timeframe. Great time, very exciting. I did very well early on in my career. I was able to buy a house when I was 23 years old. Lived in Manhattan. My computers, everything set up at my house for trading. I phased out of it a little bit just simply because my kids were born and I didn't like ups and downs. I had a food website, food blog. I wasn't getting much traction. I thought that I did have enough knowledge of cooking, especially the understanding of like the typical New York Italian food that is very different than Italian food even in Chicago or St. Louis. It's its own beast. So I felt like let's go with it. Let's talk about something that I know. What are we starting off with? Okay. So the first one that we're going to do is Pizzelli, right? Am I right? Is that the one we're starting yes. off with? Okay, I'm just making sure my <laughs> pasta pizzelli is the easiest dish, guys. You can make it a little bit more difficult if you want, or more involved. You can do a red version with tomato paste or tomatoes. We're just gonna do the like kind of the standard one that most people probably will recognize. I'm gonna do it super basic and it's just, it's kind of comfort food. You can make this for a couple dollars and you can feed your whole family. So the first thing we're gonna do is bring a large pot of water to boil, heat up a large stainless steel pan or Dutch oven, heat that to medium heat. While that's heating up, dice one medium onion. The sweet onion and the sweet pea combination is really good together. In fact, I am gonna use a half more onion. Oh, okay. This is hot now, we're gonna put the oil in. Just gonna coat the bottom and then we'll get the onions right in. This is low here, we don't need it to be high. We don't want to put any color on the onions. We just want to make them soft. So I'm going to do two tablespoons of this sea salt. So we're going to use these small shells here. These small shells are nice. The peas kind of like will go inside of it. You could even use a medium shell, but you just want a small pasta. This said eight minutes on the box for al dente. We're going to cook this only for about three or four minutes. We're going to finish this in the pea and onion mixture. And we're doing that for a reason. It's going to absorb the flavors of the peas and the onion much more than if we cook this fully. A lot of times people won't even half cook it. They'll just take the dry pasta straight in wow. and then they'll use water the whole time. This is kind of just speeds it up a little bit. If you're going to eat this now, you want to just do it this way. It's the best way. So in the four minutes that it takes to cook the pasta, we're going to just continue to saute these onions. They're going to get nice and sweet. Let them cook a few more minutes before you put the peas in. This is about halfway cooked. I'm just going to stick it right there. We're going to put the peas in to the onions because these onions are looking nice and translucent and soft. These peas are frozen. They've been sitting out for a couple hours. So you're just going to have to let them get defrosted for a minute before you add this in. I'm going to turn up the heat just a tiny bit more now. The onions won't burn at this point. A lot of comments will probably, if you've had this, will say my mother, my grandmother used the canned peas. And that is very, very common. It's very, very inexpensive. And you know, that's what people would use. We could put a little pepper in now, but we're going to put in more later. Okay. So I'm going to take some pasta water to start guys. It doesn't have to be an exact amount. We're going to cook this now at exactly a medium heat. At this point now we can start getting our pasta in. Now we're going to bring it everything together. As it's cooking, you need to taste your pasta because you want to cook it just till al dente. You don't want to overcook this. This is a block of that Pecorino Romano and we're going to put on some right now. It'll stiffen up a little bit. We'll add a little bit more pasta water. We're sharing this. Yeah. A pasta for two. <laughs> the noodles are al dente, which I like. Yeah. Because I'm always pushing like that creamy, but this is a little soupy. Yeah, it's soupy. And a lot of people like that. A lot of people like it. Completely soup. I can imagine this dish evolved as a great dish that everyone yeah. in the family, like the little kids Absolutely. would eat. Like I could see my daughter being really into this because it's refined, but it's also really yeah. simple. This is nice. And you can customize it. You can add a ton of cheese right now, hot red pepper if you want, garlic, of course, which I know a lot of people are going gonna want the garlic. It's simple. It's really simple. It seems like one of those sort of depression style Definitely. dishes, but Definitely. that just became a thing because it was also good. Yeah. <laughs> I love this little like soup at the bottom. It's so nice. Awesome. All right. 
trip to the garden for, what is this next pasta dish? Okay, so we're gonna do a spicy, creamy veggie pasta with Calabrian chili paste. Okay. The one I do has mushrooms, but we don't have mushrooms today, so we're gonna see what we have. See what we have in store. You wanna pick some fennel and take it home with you? I've got a bunch. Yeah, no, that would be great. I mean, I love fennel. Yeah, this needs to be picked. It's ready to go. So this whole thing will come out? Yeah, just go for it. Oh, wow. nice. Wow. Awesome, thank you. Things we can get for this next one. I've got some eggplant. I also have a few zucchinis. We can use both. I mean, okay, let's use both. I, then. I think that's a great idea. Okay. Okay. Zucchinis are basically done, but I might have like one or two left. Oh, we're going to need basil too. First, we'll hit the basil. You can take the whole thing. Got to go anyway. Both of those are good. Perfect. I see one. Some of the last zucchini of the season. Oh. All right, that's a good harvest. Need anything else? We're good. I think this will be fine. Back to the kitchen. All right, so we're going to make a spicy Calabrian veggie pasta with a cream sauce. People from Italy, if you put cream in anything, they want to kill you. It, Truly. How much of your channel is just offending Italian? I embrace it. You know, I, I don't think anybody from America who's lived here for a long time is gonna be an authority on Italian food. If you want good Italian food, I would go to a website written in Italian and I would use Google Translate. Pasta piselli. A lot of people outside of the New York, New Jersey, that kind of part of America, they associate it with the Olive Garden. Then they come here and they go to Carbone, you know, they go to Via Carota. But they go to places like that and they're like, wow, this is not the Olive Garden. Yeah, yeah. And you haven't lived in Long Island your yeah. whole life, but you see the Italian oh, influence. I mean, it's, it's crazy. So first we're gonna prep the vegetables from the garden. I have zucchini here. The flowers are great for frying. I'm gonna set them off to the side because we're not gonna use in this dish. I'm gonna chop that zucchini into bite-sized pieces. Then I'm gonna follow that up with chopping the eggplant into bite-sized pieces. I'm not peeling the eggplant skin. Feel free to do it if you like. Take those veggies, pop them in a bowl off to the side and then slice three garlic cloves. Now we're going to get our water up to a boil and then I'm gonna get my stainless steel pan preheated to about medium heat. So I'm gonna use grapeseed oil here because I might need to kick the heat up a little bit more than I normally would. And then I'm gonna dump in my veggies and I'm gonna start sauteing them for about seven to 10 minutes to get brown on both sides. We need the eggplant to be cooked all the way through. We're getting there. So you can see like there's a lot of color on them, but the eggplant is still a little hard. I just try like this piece right here, gonna have to give it a couple more minutes. In the meantime, we can start boiling our pasta. This is a thick pasta right here. It's pronounced pakuri. Oh, yeah, and I never say it right. I get a lot of comments for that too. Pot pa curry. I think I did this in a, uh, in a recent video. I said pacheri. Pacheri. You don't want to know my Italian accent. Yeah, yeah, well, that's even worse than mine. We're all trying here, guys, you know? All right, so I have about a gallon of water here. I'm going to do two, maybe three teaspoons. I have this fine sea salt here. Get our pasta in. Now that's gonna take around 10 this, minutes. This says 10 to 11 on the bag. I'm gonna look at my clock right now and at a minimum, I'm gonna start testing at nine minutes because I wanna finish it in the sauce for at least a minute. Once these veggies are finished, turn off your pan right now. Give it 30 seconds. Put your garlic in there and then I'm putting about two to three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. After my garlic gets nice and golden, I'm going to add one to two teaspoons of Calabrian chili paste. Cook that out for about 20 seconds in your garlic oil and then put in half a can of tomato paste. You're going to smoke Move that around, fry that paste to remove any metallic taste and to caramelize the flavors. So after your tomato paste has been frying for a few minutes, I wanna add one ladle of pasta water here and then mix everything together to basically form a tomato sauce. And then as I'm waiting for my pasta, we can add our cream to the tomato paste garlic oil mixture. Mix it in, get it all distributed as best as you can. And then once it starts bubbling, you can back that heat down. Just keep it low while you're waiting for your pasta. All right, so here's that consistency. You could do a little taste test here. That's delicious, so spicy from the Calabrian. I'll be the judge of that, Jim. <laughs> Just the right amount of spice. Yeah. Okay, once your pasta is one minute away from al dente, you can take that pasta and add it to your cream sauce. And we're gonna continue to cook this until the pasta is finished. Try to get it all coated as best you can. If you had a little bit of bigger pan here, I would say start flipping it to emulsify it, but I'm not gonna do that you with this try? thing. You wanna try? Go for it. You're like backing away, right? Like <laughs> I mean, like, is there yes. anything better than just like yeah. flipping cream sauce? That's perfect. See how much, wow. see how much that I helped. improved it? Yeah, it improved. That's why yeah, flipping is done for a reason, guys. This like, pan's this, perfect yeah. for flippy. I'm gonna taste this. Well, you're tasting it. I'm just gonna scoop a noodle here. Salt, what do you think? A little bit, right? A little bit. So I'm gonna use probably a half a teaspoon of this fine sea salt right here, but might need a little bit more. You, can throw, you can throw them in too. This is gonna be, wow. Yeah. yeah. I need some pasta water in there. Yep. 
starting to get a little too thick. Yep. Thin it out. Yeah. You know, I, honestly, I think we're pretty good here. Yeah, that looks you know? great. So now we rip the basil in. Yeah. Off heat. Tear it at the end. Just and, like yeah. That. It really is delicious. It's the final thing that the dish needs. It does need it. Okay. Um, why don't we plate this up? Yep. <laughs> All right. Go for it. All right. Oh yeah. Mmm. So fresh. That's nice. Just the right amount of heat. It's subtle. Yeah, and you gotta be careful with the brands. Certain brands are way spicier, so they might be adding something else to them. So just mm -hmm. test it out, you know, when you get it. Cream is not it's like a big a no -no. traditional. It's a big no-no in Italy. The cooks here in America, they know a thing or two too, and a lot of restaurants use cream. And I, I have no problem with it. Yeah, I right. like it. All right, Jim, so the final pasta is yes. what? We're gonna do pasta vajole or pasta vizul. And it is pasta with beans, okay? Pasta and beans. And it's a super simple dish. It can be customized to your liking. I'm gonna show you a pretty basic one, though my grandmother and mother make an even more basic one than this. First thing we're gonna do is prep our ingredients. We're going to dice one medium onion. That's a lot of onion. I wonder if I need the whole thing here. Half an onion. And then we're going to mince three garlic cloves if they're large like this, or five regular sized garlic cloves. Or use as many as you like. And then finally, the pancetta. I'm just gonna dice it up into small pieces. All right, so we're gonna heat this up to medium heat. I'm gonna put two tablespoons of olive oil in the pan and then we're going to get our pancetta in there. We're gonna let this cook. It's gonna take anywhere from like seven to 12 minutes depending on how hot your heat is. So while that's cooking, you're gonna strain the, the main element of this dish, the beans. Yeah, the beans. And so I have three cans right here, which is equal to about one bag of beans. A bag of beans is one pound. Grandma's will just use all the liquid here and it gives more starch, but I tend to just drain them. And we'll do it for the other two cans and we'll just leave these off to the side. A couple more minutes. Some of these really big fatty pieces you know, they need to break down more. All right, so the pancetta has rendered enough of its fat. You can see there's a lot more liquid, which is fat in the pan. We're gonna put our onion in now. The garlic will come in after. If we put them both in at the same time, it might burn the garlic. This is the better order to do it. If you wanna put in hot chili flakes, you would put them in probably at the same time as the garlic. How do you feel about a little bit of this dried chili? Yeah, we can definitely do that. So we're gonna cook these onions for about five minutes. So you can see the onions are nice and soft. Put our garlic in and let that go for a couple more minutes. This is way too much heat, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of it. Just chop it up. I don't know the heat level of this, so. All right, so I'm gonna put in the beans. I have the three cans that we drained. I'm gonna put in six cups of water, and then I have this little can of tomatoes, just three tomatoes. So I'll try to fish them out here. Right there, that's enough tomato. And I'm just gonna break them up a little bit with my hand. So this is just like a little flavor. Yeah, so we're very close to like a Bianco pasta vizul, so we're just putting on a little bit of red here. So we wanna bring this to a boil. Also, the one last thing I have is rosemary. I'm gonna put in one sprig. If you don't like rosemary, do not put this in. Even this little bit will really flavor it, and I think it's a delicious accompaniment to the pasta vizul. My grandmother and mother never used rosemary. And Jim, this is straight up, I mean, it looks like a soup. Yeah. So would you consider this a soup or a pasta? Um, so it's it's both. Some people like it soupy. If if you mash your beans completely, you can make it very thick. If you don't mash them at all, and you put more liquid, it can be very much a soup. So I'm gonna bring this to a boil and let it boil for five minutes before we move on to the next step. And the one last thing that I forgot is the Parmigiano Reggiano rind. You wanna do this? You can buy these in the stores, guys. A lot of places are doing this now. I think I, because I knew you do this in your videos, I even brought you got my it. Parmesan yep. You rind. got it. I didn't know if yes. you would remember. Yes, you got it. Once you get them though, and you buy a lot of Parmesan cheese, freeze them and they will last forever. I put them in everything. This is a serious boil, right? Yeah, we're boiling it for five minutes. This is just gonna to speed up the process. You can even turn it off at this point, which is probably the right thing to do. You can use an immersion blender, which we have right here, or you can just take a wooden spoon and just mash those beans right, right into the side, side of the pot like this. See, like as you mash them, they just turn into- Mush. Turn into mush. Can I go in now? Go for it. A little zibba zabba. Yep. How much? Um, I wouldn't go overboard. Okay. I don't want to get that Parmesan <laughs> rind. And I think you're good there. Yeah. I like to have a little bit of texture left, like, yeah. so you actually see some of the beans. So now I'm just gonna turn my heat back on to medium heat to cook our pasta. Yeah, this is our pasta of choice. Dittolini, or this is DiCecco's brand, so it's called Tubetti, but they're essentially just a really small pasta. Tubetti is an easier way to uh, yeah. <laughs> understand what this yeah. is. Are we going in Yeah, now? Let's, let's do it. All of it. Yep. And now you have six cups of liquid in here and you have the three cans of beans. You're gonna have to stir this the whole time. And since we're not 
at a roaring boil here. It's gonna take a little bit longer to cook this pasta. The pasta's gonna absorb all the delicious bean, garlic, rosemary, pancetta fat, everything. We're gonna just keep stirring it. You're gonna have to add liquid most likely once it starts absorbing, but you gotta keep watching it the whole time. Once this pasta starts getting bigger, you'll see it all come together. Okay, so the pasta is done. I've been tasting it like every minute, so I'm gonna turn off the heat here. You can fish out your Parmesan rind, and then you can also take out that rosemary stem. Before you serve it here, you gotta season this up with salt and pepper to taste. I imagine you wouldn't see this on many menus. No, you wouldn't. You see, actually do see it in delis. You'll see delis. you'll see it a lot of delis in Long Island. Definitely in pizzerias. But this is like a true grandma dish. Yeah, for sure. This is one of the more interesting because it is like very much in the middle of pasta and soup. Absolutely. And I always like to go like this. I mean, it looks awesome for the thumbnail, but like, look, look at how good that looks, you know? It's stuff. just so simple, you know? Yeah. You get this sort of umami like kick from the Parmesan rind yes. and the pancetta. It has a pretty intense depth of flavor throughout. You just taste it and you're like, there's some tradition there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can taste your grandmother's cooking in this pasta dish right it's, here. It's so, such a simple dish. I didn't like this dish growing up because my my mother and my grandmother made it so much. Yeah, and then those. I like pushed away from it <laughs> and then I got a place on my own and I'm like, I, I need to make pasta vizool again. I can't say I have that feeling with the things my mom made though. <laughs> so you like the things or you don't? Don't yeah. like them, still haven't come back to them. Uh, but you know, that's a different that's a different story. Every dish should have, you can taste the history, the tradition specifically to you. This is an authentic Italian. Yeah, dope. But it's, it's your Italian, yeah. your Long Island, yeah. New York Italian exactly. food Exactly. Right oh, I love it, Jim. Thanks for coming by. Right, thanks, Mike. Long yeah. Island represent. Yeah. And uh, follow this guy's channel. Yes, I Sip appreciate and cheese. it. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.